It's Kalei. Welcome to Sunco for Natural Hair. Uh, we're here in Tyler, Texas, and I'm working with Jessica today, tightening up her locks. Um, we've been having a little bit of a conversation about some of the things that are affecting the braiding laws here in Texas and what's going on here new at Sunco for Natural Hair. So I wanted to share with you guys, um, my clients, my supporters, all of you uh, other braiders and natural hairstylists here in Texas and um, all of us men and women that wear our hair in its natural state. Uh, what's going on right now, the state of Texas is uh, voting on the deregulation of hair braiding, which basically means that hair braiding, um, though it's been on the level of a professional, uh, a professional career since 2007. Now, at least after September 2015, if the vote doesn't go through the Senate before then, will no longer be considered a professional uh, arena, our professional career. There will be no license available. Uh, as of January 5th of this year, there was a ruling that lessened the burden on uh, those interested that had the qualifications and the space uh, to teach a natural hair care curriculum for the braiding license to do so. Meaning that you have the curriculum, you have the qualifications, you have the proper space, then you can license others for the state of Texas. I'm in the process of completing my application uh, for this school to open up the Sankofa School of Natural Hair and the Ancestral Braiding Arts. Uh, and what I want to be able to do through this institution is continue sharing education, um, knowledge, and culture with those of you who are interested in braiding for a living, taking care of natural hair for a living, not having to uh, deal with the chemicals, our deal with uh, the setting that goes with the typical hair salon and, and cosmetology, things like that. It just works with naturals and with those of us that are coming into the terms with who we are and finding the beauty in that. So I'm working to do everything I can to get my school started with the new regulations, but the Stepping stone are the roadblock uh, that is hampering my progress right now is the, the legislation for deregulation. And basically, it, it's saying that braiding schools or natural hair schools are not necessary. And we can look at what has gone on in other states as far as New York. Um, Oregon, Washington State, and even prior to 2015 here in Texas to see that things like braiding schools uh, are very necessary. What you learn in braiding school, or what you would learn in natural hair school, uh, is, includes sanitation, disinfection, how to work with the clients, uh, how to maintain a professional attitude, how to maintain a professional setting, um, and keep your keep your clients and keep yourself safe. You learn how to recognize uh, different disorders. You learn their causes. You learn about alopecia. Uh, you learn about some of the effects of relaxers and straightening or heavy braids and heavy extensions on the hair. And you also learn how to correct these issues. So um, all of this training is very integral to maintaining and starting a professional career. Also having the license gives us access to uh, educational arenas that you can't participate in without being able to prove that you're a professional, whether it's going to um, hair shows, exhibitions, being involved in uh, certain events that are just for licensed professionals. Not having a braiding license 
license would require having a full cosmetology license when it's already been established that they don't teach braiding in natural hair in cosmetology school. But with all these different issues that are affecting licensed braiders uh, and natural hairstylists and the, our clients, you guys, the ones that we serve, um, and whether or not we will be able to continue to do so in the same way that we have been uh, for the past almost 10 years, eight years. Um, please, I'm asking for your support. Uh, write letters to your Texas State Senator. Write uh, emails to the people that are in, in representation of us in the state. It's not that they're trying to regulate our hair. It's that they want to regulate the industry. And when any, when any industry grows in size to the degree that it is a money maker on the national level, what the state agencies are trying to do is set it up so that those of us who have the proper training, the proper knowledge, and the proper experience are able to share it with you guys, with those that are interested in coming up into the same industry. Just your tracks today. And ensure that we're all successful, that we don't have to um, be victim to those who would overcharge us, take money, not treat our hair properly, uh, expose us to unclean tools, expose us to, um, to unclean environments, and not always even on purpose because they don't have the access to education or they don't have access to the information. Uh, one of the issues that has been brought up with deregulation is the affordability of braiding schools and the, affordable, the affordability of uh, the licensing that the state requires. To that I say there is always a way to get around funding. I started Sankofa with about $100 worth of raw product and my hands and my determination. And within just a few years, I'm here. So I know from experience, you know, what the state requires for the braiding license uh, is $30 for two years. So $15 a year is the truth of it, what the state gets out of it for each braider. And that's not asking a lot. Uh, what you need for braiding school, just like any other form of higher education, there are there's scholarships, there's grants, uh, there's ways that we can make the braiding schools more affordable for people who are low income, but have the interest, the heart, and the determination to really bring themselves up and out of poverty uh, through the honest work of their hands and help to care for people. Braiding and natural hair is about caring for people. It's about healing um, them from the experiences that they've had in the past with people caring for their hair improperly or causing harm to them. It's about bringing people to a point where they are comfortable with and can accept themselves for who they are. This is a fight to continue providing quality services in a professional environment to the people who deserve to be taken care of. The people who want to look in the mirror and not want to change anything about the way God created them. They just want to find somebody who knows what they're doing with their hair, isn't afraid to approach their hair, and who they can trust to handle it wisely and to handle it carefully and to handle it with love. So what I want to do through Sankofa, the way that I've been able to find up and establish myself as a business. I want to be able to share that with other people and help to bring them into the industry and create standards and integrity in our industry. I'm going to show you a couple of things that will be included in the class. Um, that I'm sorry. These are the things that are requirements for a cosmetology school and barbering, but they haven't been required in the past for natural hair care. But if we take it seriously and we want it to be on that level, we have to supply students with the tools that they need to carry on to make a professional. As hard as it is to find a kinky hair mannequin, 
each student that is enrolls with paid tuition, your kinky hair advantage and the holder that will attach it to the table is a part of your kit. So that you can learn to familiarize yourself with working with tightly coiled hair. How do I braid it? How do I twist it? How do I detangle? These are things that you should be taught. I want to make a natural hair school where even if you're not familiar with natural hair, even if you're not familiar with human hair, it doesn't have to be something that holds fear. I want to make a place where people can become comfortable with working with it and enjoy it, learn to love it. We also have a textbook that will be included, and it's written by one of the, the best and biggest names in the business, one of the first pioneers in natural hair care and great Diane C. Baby. And then we have a full curriculum, everything that the state has asked for to satisfy 16 Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 82, Section 82.120K. This is the law as it deals with hair braiders, okay? So we wanna make sure we supply all of the requirements, make sure that everything is completed. The full outline of everything that they ask for is there. So you know that you're getting the training that you need. There's a whole section on professionalism, how to deal with clients, how to deal with transitional clients who are new to being actually, and, and going through the process of accepting their new self, which is really their true self, and finding who they are and loving who they are through their personal experience. So, like I said, all of you guys that are professionals across the state of Texas, uh, consumers across the state of Texas, this is something that is affecting us right now and will affect us in the future. So, uh, there are a few ways that you can support me. I'm going to leave a link in the box below the video uh, for the t-shirt funds. We do limited edition, we're doing limited edition t-shirts um, for Sankofa Natural Hair to support the startup costs and uh, the scholarship fund for low income men and women uh, to the Sankofa School of Natural Hair and the Ancestral Braiding Arts. Uh, I will also post links to the information for our Texas State Senators. Um, of course, I need your support. I need you to act quickly uh, in supporting me because the vote is up for this month uh, in the Senate and it, the deregulation has already passed the House. And so, of course, we know if deregulation passes, we'll be fighting for regulation again. Um, because we need to be able to make professionalism in natural hair care available for women and men who are interested in working their way out of poverty and doing so with uh, the legitimate paperwork and uh, credentials that they need. That being said, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can support through social media. Follow me on Instagram at Sankofa underscore Kalei. Uh, support me on Twitter. My name is Sankofa Kalei using the hashtags uh, braiding is art, braiding out of poverty, um, economic equality, uh, and no deregulation for braiding in Texas. So uh, I hope that I hope that we can work together. I hope that, you know, things will continue to go well, but now is the time that's come for me to ask for public help and public support with this mission of making natural hair care and braiding available, both in a safe, quality, professional environment for the consumer and making it available as a viable, professional um, arena career way of gaining income, uh, for those of us who have started in the underground and are ready to work our way up and out into the public eye. I wish you all love, peace, and wellness from Sankofa Natural Hair and Sankofa School of Natural Hair and the Ancestral Braiding Arts. As always, the truth is in your roots. Bye-bye.